Hey guys, welcome back to your next coaching session in Quick Start Coaching Code Live Bootcamp. We are doing a little bit different format this time. I wanted to share this with you to give you more of an overview of how to develop opportunity in your coaching business. Part of what you do when you get started is you find opportunity. You know, without an opportunity, it's hard to start anything because first there needs to be a door to go through. We've been talking about having these distinctions and these keys to kind of get through the doors, the keys to the locks of the doors of your coaching business or getting your coaching business started. So today I thought, what better to do than to actually give you an overview of what are, what, what are, what are the doors that you could open? You know, what, what doors could you consider? Door number one, number two, number three, like... Do you even see any doors for yourself uh, at this point? So you got to be able to see opportunity. And what we're going to cover today, we're going to get to a coaching session that I did recently uh, in another boot camp where I cover these what I call opportunity areas, how to develop entry points into your marketplace by discovering the, the who, uh, the what, like what is the way that you're going to find these who's. And then also the where, like where do they hang out? So we're going to get into some detail on that. Uh, so uh, I hope you enjoy it. I hope uh, you take a lot of notes and it really helps you get a nice overview clarity of where is opportunity for you to get that first paying client to develop your starting of your coaching business. Let's check it out. So, uh, and we're going to get to what we want. Oh yeah, actually we're getting to it right now. So. Uh, what we're talking about a lot of times when a coach is starting out, they want to figure out who should I be, uh, talking to, like, who should I target? This is not really a niche conversation when you're first getting started. It's not about trying to do some kind of high minded marketing positioning, uh, research and stuff like that. Like you'll do that to, to, at some point, but we're a little early on, uh, we're early in the process of figuring that out first. So but you still want to get a sense of who should I be talking to? Like, who do I want to target? Because you only have so many hours in the day and you still need to kind of decide where it's more of a time management type of question than it is a, uh, a niche focus question. So these are some questions you want to ask for people that you may know around you or groups and communities that you may be able to tap into. First of all, who needs a coach? Like what kind of people that I could talk to might need a coach? And there are some people that are going to be in your sphere of influence that you know they just flat out don't need a coach. And there's others that probably really are in dire need of coaches, right? Uh, all sorts of groups. Like entrepreneurs, every entrepreneur in the world needs a coach. They need 20 coaches probably. Uh, every salesperson needs a coach because they got to have somebody around them to convince them to wake up in the morning and actually get back to the job that is not necessarily always motivating for them. Um, business owners, they all need coaches. Generally speaking, there might be a few that don't think they do, but they do, um, especially them probably. Uh, people in any kind of relationship challenge needs a coach, whether it's marriage or dating or, uh, you know, there's a, probably 10 or 20 different uh, stages in those different processes of dating and marriage and, and, and intimate relationships that need a coach. And then we also have family relationships that need coach. I mean, there's tons of relationship uh, relationship types of situations where somebody truly needs a coach at that po moment in time. Uh, there are uh, all sorts of health situations where somebody needs a coach. There's also fitness situations or what you might call beauty and more uh, uh, superficial uh, aspirational situations where somebody needs a coach to support them in something. Depending on your expertise, you might be able to be that mm -hmm. coach, right? So think about all the different types of people around you that need coaches. If I went to the next Tony Robbins seminar or personal development Eckhart Tolle retreat, and I met with the 20 to 2,000 people that are at those types of events, they all need coaches. That's why they're there spending thousands of dollars on some guru who's never even going to talk to them. It's because they need a coach. And they go to the seminar thinking that that's what they need. And the reason they think they need that, and by the way, some of them might need that. That's fair. But for most of them, they really need a coach. And the reason why they're getting the seminar instead of a coach is because the people that promoted the seminar made them think they needed the seminar 
it's not because that's what they really actually needed per se. So that's, I mean, that's one of hundreds of different places that you'll find people that need and want uh, coaches, right? So think about the communities, the types of people, the types of situations that are needing and or wanting a coach. Who wants help? Who wants advice? That somebody might need a coach, but they may not want one, right? Uh, if you walk into the, the local real estate sales office, those realtors, they all need coaches. They're all kind of mini entrepreneurs, businesses within businesses. But most of them actually want help and advice too. They've been trained and taught in their industry that coaching is a good thing. And there's huge, there's, you know, 40 to $50 million coaching companies in that niche alone, right? So that's just one example of one group of people that are obviously already kind of qualified and interested in coaching and getting advice and help many 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 others if you look at the info marketing uh community uh people that market how to information uh and every single niche you can imagine that those information marketers are offering is a potential community a potential set of customers that want help that want advice at least if not want coaching now they may not be the perfect niche per se, but it could be a community that you could serve. And you might wanna hook up with those, uh, those marketers, those gurus, those authorities, those companies that offer those books, seminars, tapes, programs, et cetera. And maybe they're not offering coaching and they could use a partner like you who's gonna bring the coaching to the table. Uh, who's looking for that information? Who's looking for and hungry for info? You, know, you can find this fairly easily through some research or just think about the people around you. Who's got big problems? Who's got big goals? Anybody with a big enough problem, even if they don't necessarily know that a coach could help them, they probably need a coach. And so it's just a matter of you helping them understand that that might be useful for them. And one of the easiest ways you could do that is a free session interview where you offer them a free session at the end of the conversation. Uh, people with big goals and problems, huge, huge coaching opportunities. I'll give you one example. People that have big problems, I have, uh, let's say I have cancer. Uh, I don't care the stage. I just, I, I got, I have cancer. I just found out I have cancer a month ago. I have a big problem. I could die. I could be debilitated for years. My quality of life might change. I have totally different priorities, but that is what you could easily call a gigantic problem. And for 50% of men, and I think it's like a third of women, you're going to have that problem in your lifetime, depending on your lifestyle, obviously, um, and many other factors. So those are just the stats. So there's a ton of these individuals out there. You can find people who are specifically just working with people with cancer online nowadays. That's their niche. And the reason why that works for them, the reason why they work with tons of clients and they make good money and they help a lot of people save lives probably through that process is because it's a group of people that has a big problem and it's such a big problem that they're willing to go out of their way to work with someone else, to pay someone else to talk to them or to help them or to work with them so that they can resolve that problem or so that they can just get emotional support or so they can get some direction or resources and on and on and on, right? And you could go through all the different areas of the wheel of life and there's a list of big problems in every area, in spiritual areas, in financial areas, in health areas, in relationship areas. Every one of those big problems probably has a coach that's dealing with it if the mechanics are anywhere near right and the numbers are big enough. Same thing with big goals. People have big health goals, big relationship goals, big fitness goals, big beauty goals, big uh, uh, financial goals, big business goals, big relationship goals. Those people that have those goals, they have great desires. If they're big enough, they're probably worth targeting or considering targeting. So you can call this niche if you want, but this is more just thinking about who might I talk to more than others. That's really what we're thinking about here. Now, once you know who, and by the way, you might have a list, you might have five different groups that you could target that you're connected with. Great, that, that's, I mean, more is better at this point. This is not about singling out something at this point. This is about brainstorming. Then you gotta get a sense of what to say. Now, we talked, talked about this just a second ago. If you have a specific niche offer that you're making, uh, like 
you have like you really do work with people with cancer specifically or you really do work with people who are you know whose marriage is challenged and you're counseling them or coaching them to avoid divorce or to deal with divorce or whatever that's a very specific niche and in that case you want to use what's called the free session pitch this is in your bonuses in quick start in any of the members area you could go to any members area and you'll actually uh, uh, get access to the free session pitch I can send you a link if uh, uh, if we want to at the end of the session too uh, so you've got access to that training but the free session pitch I'm gonna simplify it here what you do in a free session pitch is very specific you first of all you name your session so whatever the big goal or problem they have you're addressing that goal in the name of the session. If they're trying to lose 20 pounds, it's the lose 20 pounds coaching session. I mean, this is not rocket science. You don't have to be creative with this. You can be, but it's more important to be clear with the name of the session that's what, what, what we call benefit driven. The name of the session should be, should be centered around the main benefit they're going to get from working with you. If hopefully the ben a benefit that they'll get in the session itself then you want to actually list the benefits they would get from that session and then finally you would want to close with some level of urgency and scarcity like you only have so many slots available or you're only going to make that available for 30 days or the next month now obviously if you're doing this one-on-one -on -one, it's a little odd to do this it sounds a little marketing stickish or hypeish. so obviously look you want to tone it down if i was offering this to you one-on-one -on -one and you have cancer and i'm a, i have a uh you know uh let's say an, an alleviate, you know, heal your cancer coaching session. I'm going to say, hey, look, I actually have a session I work with people on called the heal your cancer coaching session. We haven't worked together yet. What I'd be willing to do is I would be willing to set that session with no obligation, totally free. Uh, uh, you know, I've got some slots that are open over the next 30 days or so. Um, this is really what we'll cover in that session. You will have a plan to that's going to be personalized to you for your type of cancer and your your selected uh, approach that you want to take number two uh, you will have a list of resources that i'll send you that'll support you in things that you can do that are going to help to deal with this challenge and you'll also uh, you know you'll come away from that session with a new sense of what's possible and a sense of faith and confidence that you really can handle this no matter what uh, and i'm willing to do that just for the next 30 days if uh, you're available and if you're interested in doing that is that something you'd be interested in doing Right. So you want to soften that if you're doing that with a group or you're doing that over email or social media, you can, you know, you can be a little bit more marketing ish, you know, because people understand you're kind of broadcasting a little bit more. But you get the idea that the tone can change. So that's the free session pitch. If you're very much in already a niche situation, the problem with the free session pitch is it's niched. It's very specific. You have written out and scripted out that pitch specific to a very specific type of client so if somebody wants to stop their divorce or they want to get a date or they want to double their income i can't pitch that session to them right it's not going to work i'm going to have to at least shake it up a bit and it'll be kind of hard to do that on the fly right so that's the challenge with the free session pitch but it's still it's tremendously helpful my organization alone has scheduled thousands of coaching sessions using the free session pitch and and we've done all, most of that we've done outside of speaking and active prospecting we've done that with passive marketing uh, like over email and social and ads and things like that right if you're doing this face to face or you're doing this in front of people it's even more effective okay there are some coaches that actually sell sessions with brand new people utilizing the same type of approach uh, there's a company I personally coach. Uh, I coach almost everybody in the company. It's a coaching set. It's a coaching organization. They do, I think, like four or five million in revenue each year. This is a coaching company that does millions. Um, and they actually, I think they offer like a seven dollar session or a actually, I think it's more than that. I think it's like twenty seven. But regardless it, it that's not the most important aspect the point is they're actually using what we would give away for free the same type of marketing approach and they're actually just charging for it so they're getting paid up front for sessions that allow them then to upsell clients to bigger programs they're literally getting paid to sell coaching 
to the to the same people that are paying for the initial session okay so tremendously powerful it is a little tricky to write so anybody who works on their free session pitch during the boot camp bring it up during these coaching sessions you know like just send me you know you can email it to me you can chat it to me we'll go over your free session pitch and we can actually talk through how to tweak it how to improve it how to make it uh, scripted in a more compelling way you know and i'll, I'll offer that evaluation but uh, that's more of a niche offer uh the other approach and this is what i was going to mention cc for uh, the situation where you're not, you haven't yet chosen a niche, but you're still you're offering coaching to a variety of different targets. Uh, this would be the free session, what I call interview. This is a non-niche approach. Uh, so there are a couple keys to this. Uh, the first one is uh, curiosity. Uh, you need to be curious in order to be successful in this conversation. If you're just trying to get your agenda across and trying to get people to comply with your offer, then uh, you're probably not gonna be that effective. I mean, maybe you will be, but it'll just be more luck than actual effectiveness on your part. So, uh, so you gotta be curious. This is an interview. You're discovering things about a client that, that hopefully is something you're inspired to do. And the state of mind of curiosity is super, super helpful. Uh, for that to learn about someone else the more interested you are in them the more attractive you'll be the more irresistible you'll be when you offer the session to them because if you're interested in them they will actually be interested in what you offer them too because they'll know that you have their best interest in mind they'll know that uh that you uh are there to support them as well because most people are not interested in anything other than themselves, you know, so you'll be rare in that light, especially if you have some facility with it. Uh, next key is the relationship. Uh, the goal in the free session interview is to develop a relationship where they, they can't say no to you, you know, like the best friends in your life that like, uh, I think what if you brought this up uh, earlier on, you were talking about coaching like your mom or your aunt or the, those are the people that you're so close to. It's like, if you ask them, hey, would you like to do a session? What are they gonna say? No, they're gonna say, oh, oh, of course. Of course I'll be, you know, if it's something that's gonna help you out uh, for something you wanna do, like, I, like they're just a yes to you, right? Best friends, people that are super close, they can't say no to you. That's, that's the goal of developing this relationship is you're developing a relationship where you, you, there's so much trust and respect between the two of you that, you know, not, they, they're, they're, they're totally up for it, whatever it is that you bring up. Uh, and that maybe you've even set yourself up with them as a leader or as an, somebody who's an authority in a particular area, let's say, in their life. That takes a little bit of time, but it can be developed if you have the stuff like if you got the mojo or the the confidence or the information or the expertise that they would respect that they would look up to that they would see as something a leader should have everybody's got their own discriminatory approach for judging if somebody's an authority or a leader so not everyone will fall into that category that you provide those things to or those resources but certain people uh there's a really good chance that you can do that if you're strategic about it so developing the relationship uh next uh and this is this is a little bit past the uh, free session interview which is uh if you are trying to work out where can you find these people that might be hungry for coaching don't necessarily start with as i mentioned a cc a second ago don't necessarily start with thinking from a niche perspective start by thinking from a where perspective like the entry point where are you going to find them an entry point is a, either a physical place or it could be like a place online or a space that you can enter into uh, and so what we have here is a list of entry points and perception perceptions that show up within those entry points. So speaking is a huge entry point. You could speak in front of all sorts of different types of groups of people. And the more people you could speak in front of, the more clients you tend to generate. Some of the most successful uh, students have used speaking uh, to start their business. Uh, anybody know who Hal Elrod is, the guy that wrote The Miracle Morning? He started his coaching business going through what you're going through now with me 
uh, we trained him and he was already a speaker though. And so we just worked with him on leveraging his speaker, his speaking to generate clients. And he had a full practice in less than a year. Uh, he had all sorts of ups and downs on his journey as an author as well. There's no doubt, but his speaking got his business started. Um, we had a question about where can you find entry points? This is it. Like we're actually talking about it here. This is not in your quick start content because it's it's a bit more on the advanced side uh, side of things. So I'm going to include this in the replay. So if you miss any of it or you want to take more notes on it, you can always watch this again. Uh, but th this is it. This is where we're talking about entry points. Uh, now, the nice thing about speaking is the perception. You have a perceptual advantage in speaking. You are naturally positioned as an authority when you stand in front of a group and speak to them. There is a natural level of trust like, hey, this person is the one who's speaking in front of the group today. So they're probably someone we can trust. They're accepted by the group. There's that natural social proof that tends to show up. So speaking conveys with it a phenomenal perception that really helps give you a leg up as a coach. Uh, networking. Networking is, a, is still a place that you can generate a lot of relationships. There are perceptual challenges in networking. It doesn't generate authority for you necessarily. So respect is questioned. If I just network with you and we meet at a chamber of commerce or some seminar that we're taking together or something like that, like, I, I don't know who you are. Like, I don't know if I should respect you or trust you or what, right? And vice versa, right? So you really got to build that relationship from the ground up, like we talked about. And you're just, you're really going to have to work your butt off to generate value for that person to build enough trust and respect where you could really even set a session with them. What I find a lot of coaches do when they're networking is they give out their business card and they immediately go for the jugular and try to set a session. I'm not saying you can't do that, but that level of aggressiveness when you have no relationship, no trust from that person, no background, no safety, they don't know who you are, and maybe they don't even feel like you're in, like you're providing the niche for support that they are looking for. You know, you're more often than not, you're probably going to get a no, or you're going to get you're going to get somebody who no shows sessions as well. So there, that's where the work is in the networking side of things. It could be really challenging. I don't find networking to be the most productive entry point, but sometimes that's all there is. And so if, it, if that's it, generate relationships and uh, you're going to need to follow up, follow up, follow up over time to really create enough value in their mind to the point where you could maybe set a session with them. By the way, the sessions that I've set personally from networking have not generally turned into paying clients. I have been able to set free sessions, but there's just continued resistance on their part. Um, I think a lot of that's because the trust and respect is sometimes missing because I was too fast on the draw. I didn't build that relationship enough over time. Webinars. Webinars uh, are, the nice thing about webinars is they're easy to deliver. The trick with webinars to create the right perception is that you have to make it valuable. When somebody's on a webinar, they could just drop off and it's no big deal. They could ignore what you're covering. So your webinar has got to generate massive value for your participants. That is, it's kind of like networking, except that it's a, you have more time leverage involved with that. So make sure you create the most value humanly possible in the webinar. And then you have a good chance of getting people to show up for the webinar and also have a good chance of getting the session set from that webinar as well, which you could totally do from a webinar. Sometimes our webinars, we just set free sessions out of them. We don't even have to try to sell anything. Uh, and it, it can uh, be a really great um, funnel through which you generate customers, no doubt. All sorts of well-honed systems for webinars out there that you can tap into, scripts and approaches and technologies, and I'm not going to belabor that here, but you got to create value. There's no doubt about that. Uh, online opt-ins and social media. These both fall into the same category. They're generally like on, online coaching business type of positioning. The big perceptual problem that you have in those areas is trust. Uh, people don't trust people just because they find a marketing page or they find a website or they find somebody posted something on social. Trust is questioned. And so 
the biggest thing that you've got to be able to do, and you'll see this in my marketing left and right, is that if you're trying to have them opt in for something, you're trying to have them sign up for a webinar or sign up for a free session, you must show veritable proof that they can expect to get the result they want from you. Testimonials, case studies, success stories, interviewing your clients with how what great results they got, you must have that stuff at some level, and the better it gets, the more customers you'll get from it. The worse it is or the less you have, the more of a waste of time and energy this stuff becomes. Uh, I, I'll give you one example before we move past it. I just uh, was surfing YouTube the other day, and I saw this. Uh, somebody had a video about blogger makes six figures in less than a year. So, you know, they started their blog, and, a, and within a year, they were already up to a six-figure income. And I thought, that's pretty compelling. I wonder how they did that, right? It's an interesting story, and I blog. Uh, we have a very profitable blog, so I was interested in maybe leveraging some of the strategies I could learn. Sounds like a fast, simple, cheap way to <laughs> steal somebody's ideas. So I clicked on the video, and the video was basically just somebody bragging about the results they got, being interviewed by the people they learned from. It was just like, some kind of blog or blog training system that these people were selling right and this person kept talking about how great their life was and how they were free from their job they quit their job doing this and they're making six figures and they have this great business just talking about how wonderful everything is right but every time they asked this person how did you do that how did you do that how did you do that she just kept saying the name of the program that she took oh i, I took your six figure blogger program or i took your how to start a blog, you know, I can't remember the name of the program. It's probably not a very memorable name. But by the time, I mean, it was like a 16 minute video. It wasn't very long. By the time I was done with that video, I was looking at their website and checking out their programs and looking at the pricing and seeing what options there were. Because I was like, hey, I wanna learn all this stuff this person learned. The reason why I was so interested in that had nothing to do with the fact that you can go on Google day and night and learn everything everybody ever did in, in in all the history of time using blogs to get customers and make money. <laughs> that hadn't changed from when I watched that success story. What had changed was as I heard that story, I became convinced that this was living proof that I could produce that result if I learned from the same person that this lady learned from. That proof was what pushed me to action. You know, I could have learned the same stuff elsewhere. I could have taken somebody else's program, but here's proof that got me excited. And now online and in social media, when I see these people's information, I'm listening to it, I'm watching it, I'm interested in it. I'm not interested because I'm, I, I was already interested in doing well with blogging. I'm interested in it because I believe these people have the answers because I've seen the results at least through somebody telling their story. Maybe it's not true, but it certainly seemed convincing to me. That's what we call trust. Trust was generated, and the way they generated it was by showing what you and I might call proof. So those are critical keys to online and social media. And you'll look, check out social media tonight. You know, go on Facebook, go on Instagram, go on all those those structures and look at the people who are trying to promote their business not the sponsored stuff the, the serious marketers but the amateurs look at the amateurs you'll notice that most of the amateurs completely lack any kind of proof that anything they're offering is real it all looks like bs and then you can see you can see the professionals, the people who are serious and, and successful, that when you see their ads and you see their sponsored posts and you see their pitches, they have proof, they have success stories, they have case studies, they have very specific information that would make you at least believe it's likely or possible that what they're saying is true. Trust. So those are really key. They're, they're perceptional problems. Uh, they're perceptual handicaps. That, it, that occur in those entry points, which is why most new coaches, if when they go online, they try to niche down, they try to do this kind of stuff, it's a complete waste. I mean, it's just, it's it's not just sad, it's 
it's predictable. It's predictable because the naivete that goes along with that is, oh, the, uh, these people are just posting stuff. So I just post stuff too. And I'm going to get customers. Not if you don't have proof. And that's, by the way, one of the reasons why in Quick Start we keep you offline most of the time and actually have you just work with people so that you can start generating results. You run enough free sessions, you get enough breakthroughs from people, they're going to come and give testimonials even if they don't sign up for coaching. Those testimonials and case studies and, and people raving, being raving fans of your coaching, that's what you need to go online anyway. And that's what's missing for most coaches, that if they only had those things set up, they could really scale up their coaching business quite quickly. And yes, there's marketing and there's other things around that, but that is the linchpin to it. Uh, finally, there's SOI, what I call sphere of influence. The sphere of influence is that list that I talked about a little earlier in this call. All the people that you know, all the people that you could dial on the phone tonight, all the people that you could email, that you know they like you know them and they know you that's kind of a that's the uh, the acid test for sphere of influence sphere of influence means that you have some influence with these people maybe not total it's not like some a family member necessarily but they're within your sphere of people that you may have some influence with because they know who you are and hopefully they like you and trust you as well we might call those your warm market contacts uh, that is a significant entry point as well. So those are some potential entry points. Now, inside of an entry point, you want to develop what I call an opportunity area. An opportunity area is an area within which uh, you're going to um, you're going to develop a way to generate uh, uh, sessions. So think about everything we've covered today in this in these notes, like like what are people that need coaching and are hungry for information, people that you have access to, et cetera, and the entry points that you, uh, that you might be able to tap into around that and define those groups, discover the entry points that might give you access to those groups, then plan how to develop the right relationship. And again, some of the keys to that are covered, in, covered here in the perceptual issues and, and, and key uh, uh, points of development. Uh, how can you develop the right relationship with that group, with those entry points, with those people? And then script your conversations accordingly. Script your conversations to set sessions. There's two conversations that you want to learn. One is the free session interview. The other one is the free session pitch. Those are located in your members area. I'm going to show you right now. I'm going to give you the links to them since we've been talking so much about this. Uh, let's just get right to it. Here's the free session interview. Here's the free session pitch. These are available to you in the members area. Free session interview is here. There's a full trainings on, on the entire aspect of those techniques. Free session pitch is here. Those are the resources I would leverage to to script out the conversation that's the last moment before somebody actually sets a session with you in this entry point development process. This point, this, this, this process of figuring out what are the entry points or who are the people that you're going to target and then developing relationships with those groups and those individuals. All right, well, what do you think? Did you learn some who's that you might access, some places you might go? Uh, did you get a sense of the the what? Like, what's the way that you're going to actually reach these individuals? And actually, what are some of the psychological upsides or even challenges and uh, pitfalls uh, that you need to work through in order to kind of find the right place, right time, right person, and right venue through which you can enter that coaching conversation with a new potential client, like a real new potential client, not just somebody that you just run into on the street and hope that everything works out. I'm not saying that can't be done, totally can, and sometimes should be done with a new client, but uh, what's really nice is to be able to set up something for yourself so that you can have a repetitive way of finding new clients that is just like your go-to place, your go-to market as well. 
So hope that made sense. If you have any questions, let me know and uh, execute on some of this stuff. And then in the next couple days, we're going to get into more detail on tactics that you can use. I think I hit a high note on that one. Tactics. Tactics you can use uh, in order to uh, reach these individuals and develop the relationship the right way. Take care, and I'll look forward to talking to you then. Yeah.